Seventh grade is when it, went all, it all went bad for me. And uh, the best way for you to understand that is to imagine a graph. And the vertical axis is here. On top is popularity. On the bottom is unpopularity. And the horizontal axis describes first grade through eighth grade. <laughs> through the first seven years, um, that covered what I call the PSE, the pre-sexual era. <laughs> and that went very well for me. <laughs> thank you, derived from my pain, thank you. Um, that was when a skinny boy with freckles who got good grades could be popular up here. And then in the seventh grade, hormones and growth spurts hit. And that's when I learned that muscles are to boys as breasts are to girls, a precious natural resource unevenly distributed. <laughs> and that's when my line started to plunge. And that's when the line of the newly muscled dumbasses shot up. <laughs> and we crossed about here. Okay, so that's the scene setter. You, so, into this compromised situation, from my point of view, came the new kid, Lee Carreri. And now every new kid has a strategy for fitting in. Lee Carreri did not care to fit in. Lee wanted to be respected. And his strategy for being respected was pretty much to schedule two fist fights a day, <laughs> every day for his first week in school. And he didn't just fight anyone, he fought the newly popular muscled boys. Um, you know, in a Jane Austen novel, there's often a scene... <laughs> I hope this relates. <laughs> where the beautiful ingenue arrives in London and she makes the circuit of influential homes, introducing herself. What Lee did was like that. <laughs> if the ingenue at every townhouse got her ass kicked. <laughs> So I found myself sitting across from him in the cafeteria one day and I'm looking at his face, it's covered with bruises and welts. And I said to him, what are you doing? And he, without hesitating, he said, I'm adopted. Before that, I lived in an orphanage. I know two things. You have to fight for your place in this world and you can never back down. And as he said this, I swear to God, he radiated this sort of this bizarre conviction that in the end, he was the one who would prevail. And why did he think that? Because he had faith in his social assets. What were his social assets? He could build homemade radios and play jazz piano. This was the seventh grade, those are not social assets. On the other hand, he was pudgy and had oily skin. So, obviously, we became friends. <laughs> and I remember walking home from school one day, we were walking together up the steep hill, and he said to me, you know, if we lived someplace normal, we would have girlfriends by now. You and I have got to get out of this Catholic shithole. <laughs> and now, I, my whole life, I had gone to Annunciation Church, an Annunciation Catholic grammar school show. I was shocked by this statement. We could have girlfriends? <laughs> I knew I lived in a Catholic shithole. So, I thought to have a girlfriend, a girl had to want to be your girlfriend, or you had to persuade or trick a girl into wa <laughs> wanting to be your girlfriend. But Lee talked about it as if it was this natural thing that could and would happen to us. Lee was not from the planet Westchester. So he knew of other worlds and could even imagine inhabiting them. And that's, that was what was so great about him, uh, especially at that age. So we go to high school. He goes to the um, School for the Performing Arts. I go to a Catholic school in White Plains. We both take the train every morning in opposite directions. He goes into the city. I go deeper into Westchester. <laughs> we lose touch. By the time I graduate, I'm pretty fed up with my hometown. So I've been working a few jobs, I got a little money. 
I decide I'm going to bicycle from California to New York. So I do. And one day I put in like 90 miles and I end up in Albuquerque. And normally I camp out, but I take a room in a crappy motel. And it's sort of hot and I'm restless and I go out walking at night and I come across this movie theater and the show's about to start. I get a ticket, I go in, I sit down. And the movie starts playing and it's set in the School for the Performing Arts. And there's a character named Bruno who plays jazz piano. And it is fucking Lee Carreri. <laughs> it is fucking Lee Carreri. And he's on the screen, and his head is 20 feet big, and he's singing, and he's dancing, and he's talking to girls, and he's slim, and he's got cheekbones, no bruises. And the movie is Fame, directed by Alan Parker with Lee Carreri in the role of Bruno. And he's there, and I look around the theater, and it's packed, and people are, are having a great time, loving this movie. And I hear someone talking out loud. And then I realize I'm talking out loud. It's me. <laughs> I'm looking up at the screen, and I'm seeing my friend. And I say, you did it. Fucking A. Lee Carreri, you did it. You did it. 